told them just to stay up here. They don't, don't go far because God, I, I'm not going to tarry long because God's going to do the work. I'm going to let God take over and do because this is what God wants. God instructed this. God put this together. God said, Rex, here it is. Laid it out. So here it is. This is what it is. Today's title. I know my Lord's going to lead me out. <laughs> I know that my Lord's going to lead me out because, see, I've come up against barriers. How many in here has ever come up against a barrier? You've gone as far as you can go. There's no way to escape. You've gotten to the point to where it is over. It is over. That's it. That is over. There's all kinds of situations in here this morning. You know your personal need. You know exactly what you need. You know how you need it. You know when you need it. You know where you need it. And you know that you don't need it tomorrow. When do you need it? Right now. Right now. Right now at this very moment, at this very time, God wants to lead you out. Whatever it is, whatever your problem, whatever your circumstance, whatever your situation, God is ready to lead me and you out. And go to the promised land. You see, we find ourselves in these situations and, and there's no way out. And there's, you come up against a wall. We come up to that barrier to where there's nowhere to go. There's nothing to do. There's nothing to say except, hey, Satan, you've won this time. In the book of Exodus in chapter 14, we're going to read verses 1 through 6 at the beginning. Verses 1 through 6 right quick. And you know that the children... Of Israel, they had, they had been in captivity 430 years. They had been held captive for all this period and all this time. And finally, they were set free and was able to go. Finally, they was able to free, uh, be free and set free and go out and be their merry way and, and go do their merry thing however they wanted to go do it. But you know, it's not always easy. And it says, then the Lord said to Moses in 14.1, Then the Lord said to Moses, Tell the Israelites to turn back and encamp near Papharoth, between Migdal and the sea. And, the, and they, uh, they are to encamp by the sea, directly opposite Baal, Zephon. Pharaoh will think the Israelites are wandering around the land in confusion, hemmed in by the desert. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and he will pursue them. But I will gain glory for myself through Pharaoh and all his army, and the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord. So the Israelites did this when the king of Egypt was told that the people had fled Pharaoh and his officials changed their minds about them and said, What have we done? We have let the Israelites go and pay close attention and have lost their services. Let that ring for just a second. Pharaoh and them changed their mind. Because they figured out that they had lost the services of the Israelite children. In other words, if you don't get it, Satan had lost some of his warriors. Because, because Satan chose Pharaoh to do his dirty work. And, 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 with, and, with, and with Satan uh, using Pharaoh to take these Israelite children... And to guide them and direct them and, 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 to, and to go through all these circumstances that they went through. This is what he said. Satan's strength and power and his attitude come through what Pharaoh directed into these people. The, into the Israelite children as, as Satan used Pharaoh because they was under his power. He lost those who did the dirty work for him. Pharaoh lost these people who did the dirty work. He lost those who he could control. He lost those who, who took his punishment. And he lost those uh, who were slave to his power and his ideas. He made it rough on them. And he made it rough on them. And Satan used Pharaoh to come and guide and direct. And, and you know what? And, and when he come and to do that, they were under the power and control uh, of Pharaoh. Just like me and you become under the power and control of Satan. And how strong is Satan? Straight, Satan is no stronger than what what me and you make him to be. That's, that's the strength that he has because here it is. You know what? It wasn't happy. This wasn't a good idea 
This wasn't a good idea for when Pharaoh looked at it and saw. He said, "Wait a minute! I, I, I've lost. I've lost part of my. I've lost part of my flock. I've lost part. I've lost those people who was going, who I could control, who I could guide around and walk around on a leash and do what I told him to do. I, I've lost this, and now, oh my goodness, what am I going to do? Well, Satan doesn't like for you to go through that land and, and be led out by God, church. So Satan doesn't like that, and he will pursue." you you see this was a this was a task that that pharaoh you know god hardened pharaoh's heart and and when when moses went to lead them you know it wasn't easy it was hard it was very difficult for them because they had to go through the 10 plagues satan went i mean uh, moses went over and told pharaoh you know what we you gotta you gotta let go you gotta let go you gotta let these children go because if you don't you know what the land's gonna turn to blood all the water's gonna turn to blood Nope, ain't going to do that. What a water turned to blood. The frogs was the next plague. All, the land was covered in frogs. And then the gnats and the flies. And then the livestock and the boils and, and the hail and the locusts. All of these, every time Moses would go back and say, Pharaoh, you got to let them go. You know, this, this was just not easy. You see, when things is done easy in mind in your life, it doesn't mean that much to us. It, wasn't that, it didn't mean that much to you this morning when you went out and crunk your car up. Because you expected it to crank up. It done exactly what you wanted it to do. And so you didn't get mad and upset. Now, if it, if it wasn't a crunk, then you would have, wrong, 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 wrong. Then, then you would have got a little frustrated. <laughs> it, it wouldn't have been, if your tire was a flat, then, then you would have, my, hey, get out here and change my tire. But see, when things is not easy for us, then, then and when it worked for it, and when we work for it, and we work for it, and we work for it, then it changes us in a sense and a matter. But, but I can see, I, I, I can see Aaron because, you know, Moses said, I can't do this, Lord. I can't go out and I can't go lead these children for you. But, but, but he says, you know, I, I'm going to send a helper with you. So Aaron, his brother, comes along. And I can see Aaron whenever, every time he, uh, Moses goes over to Pharaoh and says, you know, you got to let these go. I can see uh, Aaron saying, you know what, <laughs> Moses, there ain't no need in going back no more. Wait, there ain't no need in going back no more. He's not going to listen to you. He's not going to listen to you. He's not going to listen to you. And every time I'm going back because God told me to go back I'm going back because God told me to go back and, and, and he goes back and Aaron's just man you just need to quit you just need to quit because what you're doing there's not nobody going to listen to you How they, don't, they know that you don't have a relationship with God because you know you go and God's supposed to told you to go tell him this and go tell him that and, and it doesn't happen but then when it comes down to that tenth plague the firstborn child of every house was going to die. The firstborn child of every house was going to die. About midnight, then the plague was going to come through. The, the death angel was going to come through. And, and here it was that the, ch- the firstborn child of every house was going to die. Under one exception. And, and Moses told the children. He told the children, said, this is what you got to do. He says, I want you all, every household, and if you don't have, you know what, if you don't have a lamb, you don't have that, that lamb, then you know what, you share with your neighbor the one that don't have one or whatever, you know, and he says, and go, and you mark the door frame all the way around on your front porch. On the, door fo- on the door post, on the door frame, all around, I want you to go and I want you to smear the blood of the lamb. And so this is what, this is what Moses, when Aaron comes back this last time, Hey, hey, Moses, there ain't, ain't no need in going over there. There ain't no need in you going over there because they ain't going to listen to you. Pharaoh's already got a hard heart. He, he ain't listened to you nine times. Why is he going to listen to you the tenth time? Why is it, what's going to happen here? And I can hear Moses saying, I tell you what, Aaron, you go get me a lamb. Go get me a lamb and bring me the lamb. And, and Aaron goes and gets the lamb and he brings it back and he gives it to Moses. He said, okay, Moses, here's your lamb. He said, this right here is how God's going to save the children. He's going to save it through the slain lamb. He's going to save it. He's going to lead the people out of captivity through the lamb. And the church, that's exactly how me and you has been led out. It's by the blood, by the lamb of, of our Savior Jesus that came and died on the cross for me and you now now it gets deeper now because you know when all these things happen when this frustration happens and when these things happen it automatically puts us into that mood into that mindset oh my goodness there is no way there is no way there ain't no way in the world that I'll ever get out of this there ain't no way nothing there ain't no way uh uh-uh I just can't do it 
We go to thinking in our minds. It's time for me to throw in the flag. Let's read verse 10. Verses 10 through about 16. As Pharaoh approached the Israelites, looked up, and there were the Egyptians marching after them. They were terrified and cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, was it because there was no graves in Egypt that you brought us out the desert to die? What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? <laughs> Did we say that you in Egypt leave us alone, let us serve the Egyptians? I would have been better off for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. Moses answered the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance of the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians that you see Today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. Raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea to divide the waters so that the Israelites can go through the sea on dry ground. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. Here these children are. The Israelites, here they are. They've been freed. They've been set free out of captivity. They, they have, they don't, not under the control of Satan no more, but they're out free to go and do as they please, and they're on their way. They're on their journey. And, and, and it came to a time that, that they would come up against that brick wall. Come back with our, with our screen up there. And, and this is where we are when we come up, when we come back up to that, to that place in life where they're there's no way to go because here the Israelite children, they are now at the Red Sea. They are there at the sea and there is no way that they can go across church. Now, I want you to put yourself and your situation in the exact spot where the Israelite children were. They had the sea in front of them and they look over to their left side and there's the mountains of mountains and there's no way to escape to hurry up and get right. And on the other side, now they see a, a dry, dry dry, long, hot desert on the, on the other side of them. And then they turn around and look behind them and they see the dust cloud boiling up and here comes the Pharaoh and his army and, and now they're in a situation that they don't have nowhere to go. And, and you may be here this morning and you're in the exact same spot. Whatever your situation is, you don't have nowhere else to go. You're going to make three decisions this morning. Three decisions you'll make this morning. The first decision is you'll throw in the white flag and you'll surrender. The second decision is take a chance and just fight. And then the third thing is run to the mountains or either run to the desert. But you see, in this scripture, God commanded Moses to tell the children, listen, I'm going to give you a three-fold way to escape. I'm going to give you three answers to answer what you need today. And, and God's speaking to you right now in your situation, whatever it may be. You may be here, you may be here today because mom or dad drug you in here, young children. You may be in here today, husband or wife, because your husband or wife demanded that you come today. You may be here because you're really seeking God's help. You're, you're in a situation that you really need God's help. You may be here today with an addiction. You may be here today with something that, that's overpowered you and overtaken you. You may be here today with demons in you. You may be here today with all kind of problems, but I tell you, you can leave here today going out that road because I know that my God has come to lead you out of your situation. Verse 13 and 14, it says, Moses answered the people, do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still, church. So here's what he told him. He says, don't be afraid. There ain't no need in you in surrendering. Stand still. No need to fight back and see the deliverance of the Lord. Is number three. And there's no need to hide because God come to battle for you. It's not your battle. It's not your battle. It's not your battle. This battle belongs to God. God put us in this situation so he can have glorification. He made it hard 
life. So he'll take the enemy and show the enemy you thought that you had him, but I got a stronger hold. I got a stronger grip. I got a bigger control. And I come to lead my children out. And my children will not stay in captivity. I'll free them and I'll free them and I'll send them to that promised land. Gracious Lord, have mercy. I will send them to that promised land. You know, this is a, it's not easy to stand still. It's not easy to praise the Lord. It's not easy to do these things when you're faced with danger, when you're faced with fear, when you're faced with depression, you're faced with sin, you're faced with anger, you're faced with captivity, you're faced with frustration, you're faced with all kind of problems and situations. It's not easy to stand still. It's not easy to come and let God do the work. It's easy for me to stand in the way. It's easy because I know I've came up against that wall. I've came where there was no way to escape, and I wanted to fight Wade, and I know that you've been in that same situation where you wanted to fight. If you're honest today, you'll say, yeah, I've been in that situation. I was ready to take and take control of it. But you know, the longer I fought, the deeper that I went down. And the more that I fought, the deeper that I went down. And the more that I fought, and the deeper I went down. But I was like Peter. I reached up and took the hand of God and he pulled me right back up. He said, get up here, my child. I want to lead you out. I want to take you out. I want to lead you over into the promised land. Lord, have mercy. My goodness, I want you to turn to the book of 2 Chronicles right quick. 2 Chronicles right quick, and I want us to read in chapter 20, verses 14 through 22. You see, there's another guy by the name of Jehoshaphat. He was leading the children. He was in the situation. He was leading them under his control. But in a word came to Jehoshaphat. And told him, said, oh, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. Uh, you're in danger. Uh, you're in danger. I'm going to kill you. I, I'm going to destroy you and your people. <laughs> Man. The Moabites and Ammonites and the Moonites were coming to kill him. The first thing that he chooses to do, the very first thing that he chooses to do, what he comes up, the scheme that he comes up with. This is what he tells his children to do. Listen, this is what I want you to do. First of all, I want you to go into a fast. I want you to fast. I want you to fast. I want everybody, I want the whole village, I want the whole town, I want the whole community to go into a fast. You know what a fast does? It brings you closer to God. It gets you in your prayer life where you'll get closer to God. When your belly goes to hurt and your belly goes to churning, you get on your knees and you go to crying out for God. And the more that you cry out to God, the more that God's going to hear you. But church, that ain't it. The more you cry out to God, the more God's going to answer your prayers, church. And that's what Jehoshaphat told him. Says, I want everybody to get into a fast and I want everybody to listen. I want everybody to do what I'm commanding them to do. Now listen as he goes on in verse 14 then the spirit of the Lord came upon Jehazel the son of Zechariah the son of Benai the son of Jeel the son of Manani the Levite and descendants of Ashphar and, the, and he stood in the assembly he said listen King Jehoshaphat and all who is in Judah and Jerusalem this is what the Lord says to you this is what the Lord says to you today in your trouble, in your time, in your situation. Whatever that may be. You may be here today searching for God. You may be here today and you don't know Him as your Lord and Savior. Well, I want you to listen. I want you to do exactly what it says. And this is what He told him. This is what the Lord said, said for you to do. He says, do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army. For the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow, march down against them. They will be climbing up by the pass of Ziz. And you will find them at the end of the gorge in the desert of Jero. And you will not have to fight this battle. Take up your position. Stand firm and see the deliverance of the Lord will give you. Oh, Judah and Jerusalem, do not be afraid. But do not discourage. Go out to face them tomorrow. And the Lord will be with you. Praise God, somebody say. And, and Jehoshaphat bowed with his face to the ground. And that the people of Judah and Jerusalem fell down 
down in worship before the Lord. Then, uh, then, then some Levites from, the, uh, from that one and, and that one, other one and stood up and praised the Lord. And God said to Israel with very loud voices, pay close attention, early in the morning they left from the desert of Tekoa. And they, they set out. Jehoshaphat stood and said, listen to me, Judah and people of Jerusalem. Have faith in the Lord your God and you will be upheld. Have faith in his prophets and you will be successful. After consulting the people, Jehoshaphat appointed men, appointed men to listen, church, to sing to the Lord and to praise him for the splendor of his holiness as they went out at the head of the army saying, give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever, church. And I tell you, in your time, in your situation, in all the problems and the circumstances if you're in, if you'll sing praises to God, it'll open up the prison cell. If you'll sing praises to God, he'll loosen the chains that bind you down. If you'll praise God and worship God and turn all your attention to God instead of turning it to the circumstance, you will see God freeing. You will see God leading you out. You'll see God leading you through that land. You'll see God leading you past your boundary. He'll part the sea for you. He'll take the enemy and drown the enemy. And the enemy that's coming after you today, they will be dead tomorrow because God will do the same thing for you as he did for the Israelite children. Lord have mercy. God's take. He'll do the same for you today is what he did for the Israelite children. Three things Moses commanded. Prayer, power of God, and praise and worship. Praise and worship. I, I want you to go back. I want us to look at verse 15. Uh, chapter 15, verses 1 through 3. And, and this was after. But the Israelites went through the sea on the ground. This is verse 29. They went through on dry ground and with the water out. And then the Egyptians, that, that people feared the Lord and put their trust in him and Moses and his servants, all these people. But then in verse 15, uh, chapter 15, it says, Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song. Man, it's amazing what singing to do, ain't it? Let's sing a little bit. Come on. I know my Lord. I know my Lord. Don't leave me out. What's he gonna do? I know do? my Lord, don't leave me out. What's he gonna do, church? I'm gonna pray and do the best I can. I know my Lord's gonna leave me out. I know my Lord, don't leave me out of the real land. I know my Lord, I know my Lord, don't leave me out. He's gonna leave you out. I know my Lord, I know he's gonna leave, leave you out. out this morning. I'm gonna pray. Do the best I can. Yes! I know my Lord gonna leave me out this yes. prayer Yeah! He's gonna lead you I'm out. Pressing on. He's gonna lead you out. He's gonna lead you out. Y'all can just keep playing just like that. Chapter 15 in verse 1, he said, Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. The horses and his riders he has hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will praise him, the Father God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. Church, if you've got a problem this morning, if you've got a situation this morning, you let a true warrior come to battle for you. You let a true warrior come and fight for you. You let a man who knows what to do come and fight for you. You let somebody who will set you free and he'll kill the enemy behind you. You let a warrior come. Me and you are not, we're not the warriors that God is. God called me and you to be warriors, but he called me and you to stand behind him. And a lot of times, me and you want to get in front of him instead of letting God fight me and you want to fight I'm talking about a warrior that will lead you and lead you and part the sea and do everything that you can't do he'll do things that you can't do he'll do things that you can't do he, oh Lord y'all didn't get it y'all didn't get it the Lord is a warrior 
The Lord is a warrior. And you know what? The Lord is his name. The Lord is a warrior. And the Lord is his name this morning. Church, let's go. Come on. I know my Lord gonna lead me out. I know my Lord gonna lead me out. I'm gonna pray and do the best I can. I the Lord is a warrior. Gonna lead me out the the Lord is His name. Woo! I know my Lord. You got a battle. Get down here to this altar. I know my Lord. You got a battle, get to this altar. You got a battle, get to this altar. You got a situation, you get to this altar. You got a problem, you get to this altar. You need somebody to help you this morning, you get to this altar. In the name of Jesus today, in the name of Jesus today, he came to fight for you. Aaron, Aaron is telling Mo Moses, ain't no need you going back. There ain't no need you going back. There ain't no need you going back. They're not going to listen to you. I tell you in the name of Jesus right now. I tell you in the name of Jesus right now. All in the name of Jesus right now. I tell you, Satan, there ain't no way you're going to come. Oh, let me go and show you. Let me show you right now, Aaron. Go get me that calf. Go get that calf and bring me that calf. Go bring me that. Yeah, and go get me the lamb. I just want you to get me the lamb. Get the lamb and bring the lamb to me. I'll show you what it is. I'll show you how I lead you out. I'll show you how I lead you out. I'll show you how to get through. 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 I'll show you the way out. You come to the order, I'll show you a way out. I'll show you a way through your fucking sin. It's all God. You give God the praise. You give God the glory. You let God take this situation. You don't bet it. You let a warrior, a 